Welcome to Bridge Online. My name is Savannah and I serve on the team here at The Bridge. And I hope that as you join us for service this morning, you feel right at home. Here at The Bridge, we're all on a journey to be with Jesus and become like him for the sake of the world. And so today, as we dive into a time in God's word together, we pray that it is a blessing to you and encourages us all to abide with and be transformed by Christ today and every day. So if you're joining us for the first time, I'm so glad you're here. Would you let us know you're here by doing one quick thing and dropping a waving emoji in the chat? One of our online hosts would love to say hey and get you connected. And if you're not joining us for the first time this week and maybe you call the bridge home, can you help me welcome everyone who is joining us for the first time this week by giving them a big bridge welcome and helping them make connections right here on the stream. Then make sure to share this stream because we don't want anyone to do church alone this morning. And you never know who could join and be a part of this experience with us. All right, it's time to get started. So as we head into this time of worship together, I'd encourage you to make your living room, your bedroom, your office, wherever you're at, a sanctuary where you can be fully present with God this morning. Set aside any distractions, get a copy of God's word ready, maybe even a pen and notebook so you can take notes as you go. But also, we're not doing this alone. So at any time, drop in the chat when something is encouraging you or stands out to you because we're here to do this together and be on the journey of being with and becoming like Jesus with one another. So on that note, let's dive into worship. this morning. Would you stand and join us as we worship our God this morning? How precious is the one who bore my sin? How beautiful the hands that drew me in. The Savior of the world. Contained by time or space, the one who lit the stars and knows my name, he's the savior of the world, the savior of Jesus, your name will echo through you. 
to save. Oh, he's already won. Mm, let's sing this together, church. Fire in his eyes, love in his veins, conquering king, he's mighty to save. Demons acknowledge the powerful name of Jesus. Fire in his eyes, love in sing and worship church we sing men of sorrows men of sorrows lamb of God by his own betray the sin of men and wrath of God has been on Jesus name Yeah. 
writes to the Lord and says, I'm always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That's the place that we get to sing from this morning. Jesus has paid it all, and we can bring our entire hearts before the Lord. So as we do that this morning, let's sing out, let's lift our entire selves up to Him, everything that we have to offer, because He's so worthy, He's so good. I place my identity down at the feet of Jesus Christ down who I want to be, and here in my death I find new life, the star of alabaster, my worship light perfume, to show who I am after, I'm after you, and I don't want to give a Spot. 
God, whatever we brought into this place this morning, Lord, whatever we're carrying, would we lay it at your feet and surrender it to you? And would you do much in this place this morning? We are so thankful for your love and your grace for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Bridge family, whether you would say you have the best voice in the greater Nashville area or quite the opposite, regardless, there is no denying that it is special to raise our voices together as one church and worship the Lord this morning. Yeah. It is so good to be gathered with you in person and to those of you online, welcome to church. Before you find your seat, go ahead and say hi to someone around you and tell them you are glad to see them. the chance to meet before. My name is Hannah and I am a part of our team here at the bridge and it is truly a joy to be here with you this morning. If it's your very first time here joining us at the bridge this morning, welcome. We are so honored that you chose to spend your Sunday morning with us and we hope you stop by our first time guest tent on your way in but if you happen to have snuck past that after your service I will be hanging out while we call the living room. It's this area of couches right here in the back of the auditorium, and you literally pass it on your way out. And so I would love for you to stop by. I would love to learn your name, to get to know you, answer any questions you might have about the bridge. I'll even have a little gift for you. So come stop by in the living room after service. And for all of us, this morning, the best way to stay connected to all of the things happening at the bridge all throughout the week is through our digital connect card. And so if you pull out your phone, you can go to bridge.tv slash next, and there you'll see where you can leave your information, any comments, questions, or prayer requests you might have, and we will have someone from our team reach out to you this week. Well, y'all, Hopefully we all love a good story of how God is at work in our community. And it's even more special for me to share those stories when I've gotten to witness how God is at work through you, through our church family and through your generosity. And so I wanna tell you a little bit about one of our local missions partners, 431 Ministries. So 431 does an incredible job at loving women in our community, helping them feel known, seen, and loved. They wrap around single moms, women who have lost their husbands to death or divorce, and they help support them. They provide financial support, coaching, mentoring, um, and they really do a ton to love on these women. And a while back, they purchased this building and they had a huge, they have a huge dream for this building. They hope that this building will multiply their ministry, that it'll be a place where they can open a cafe for these women to do life with one another and build community. They have dreams for this building to be a place for childcare facilities, for counseling facilities, a place where mentorship can happen. They have a huge dream for this building. There's just one really big problem and that the is that there is a huge hole in the roof. And so, yeah, it's a really big problem. So about a month ago, the board of 431 got together and they felt like the Lord placed on their heart the story of Nehemiah and how God called Nehemiah to rebuild the wall in 52 days. And they felt like the God was asking them to rebuild the roof in 52 days. Yeah, it's... It's an impossible dream, but it is possible with God, right? And so what is so encouraging is that about a month ago, we met, we gathered, and we talked about how everything given that morning was given directly to women and to our local missions partners. And so y'all, I'm so encouraged by your generosity because because of you, because of what you gave, we are able to participate in the Nehemiah Project and be a part of what 431 is doing and their goals to help rebuild their roof. Yes. 
That's so encouraging, and I'm just so excited to see how God uses them and works through them to build His kingdom and share the gospel in our community. And so y'all, thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. It truly is an example of the gospel. It shows the love that you have received and what God has given you, and that is why we give. It's an act of worship. And so because of that, every time we gather, we never want to miss an opportunity to give back to God. And so if you call the bridge your home, you'll see ways that you can give on the screen. And in just a minute, buckets will be passed where you can play your, your gifts in there as well. And so as our team comes up to do that, we have a ton going on in the life of our church. And so let's turn toward the screens to check out Bridge News. family. My name is Rachel from our team here at The Bridge. And whether you're joining us in person or online today, I am so glad you're here. Here at The Bridge, we believe everyone has a next step to take. So what's next for you? If you've been checking things out for a few weeks and want to know more about who we are, or you're just ready to get plugged into the life of our church, we have just the thing for you. Open House. Coming up next month on August 28th, Open House is an opportunity for you to learn about who we are, what we do, and how you can be a part of it. And we'd love to save you a seat. Head on over to bridge.tv slash RSVP and let us know you'll be there or just check the box on your connect card and we'll send you all the details and we'll see you there. One of the most special days we celebrate as a church family is coming up, Baptism Sunday. We've seen God moving in lives of people all across our church family and we're so excited to celebrate. It's always a powerful day and you don't wanna miss it, especially if this is the next step for you in your walk with Jesus. Make plans to join us August 14th when we'll come together for baptisms at every service across both locations. Head on over to bridge.tv slash baptism and we'll connect with you to answer any questions you have and take care of all the details. We can't wait to celebrate together. All this and so much more is coming up here in the life of our church. And if you don't wanna miss a thing, you can sign up for our weekly e-news at bridge.tv slash e-news, where there's also a spot for you to get updates from our kids and students teams as well. Or follow along on social at bridgechurchtn so you're always in the loop on what's happening here at the bridge. To all the kids that are joining us in person or online today with your family, we're so glad you're here. Parents, Bridge Kids is happening right now, and it's the best environment designed specifically for your kids to learn about Jesus in a way they best understand. We also have a family lounge with a live stream of the service, so if you have to step out for any reason, you won't miss a thing. On that note, let's prepare our hearts as we receive the Word of God today. Good morning, Bridge family. Uh, it's good to see you. My name is Rob, uh, and I am on staff here at the Bridge. I'm the Columbia location pastor. And so I want to greet all of you, obviously, here at our Spring Hill location, but also all those who are joining us online. My mom is probably joining online from Indiana. There's Dan from Ohio. There's Jeff from Ohio, and probably all points in between. Uh, but also, uh, I absolutely love, as you do, our Columbia family. And so I want to make sure I'm greeting Jordan and Becky and Freddie and all the new people that are connecting to our ministry teams. I also want to greet my wife, Angela, who is watching from our Columbia location. Uh, she, is my, uh, she is my hero in the Lord, and she is pretty. And so, um, so just thought I shared that with you for the, there are some of you that are guests right now going, this is my last Sunday right now, right now. Uh, so, uh, we are continuing this series on, uh, Proverbs. 
Uh, and this is so important because if you're like me, whenever I go through the scriptures, I'm trying to think where I need to be in the scriptures for devotion. I have to admit there have been many times I've skipped Proverbs because it's almost like this is kind of maybe a little bit boring or I'm not understanding why it would necessarily apply to me. But the more and more we get into the book of Proverbs, the more we realize we really need the book of Proverbs because over and over again, the theme of Proverbs is wisdom. And my friends, if there is anything this culture in this world needs, we need wisdom. We need lots and lots of wisdom. But when you read Proverbs, there's many times when we read, go through the book and there may uh, be a subject matter that lasts for one verse, or there may be some couplets that talk about a certain topic and, and that's it. In other words, you don't see like all these huge uh, connected pieces of literature together. Uh, and it almost comes across, and I don't know if you've ever heard of this company called Successories. I know I'm dating myself a little bit, but Successories, it's still a company, and what they do is they, they publish all these, they make all these pictures, and they're like business motivation pictures. And they'll have like this, uh, this picture and then this phrase underneath it. And that's supposed to help us be motivated. And, and if you've been part of businesses, I promise at some point you've seen successories. I've actually seen them in bathrooms. I remember there was one time I went to the restroom. This is more information you want to know. I, and, and it literally says, you got this. I don't need to know that. I do not need to know that. And so let me give you some examples of successories. These are actual, you know, images. And so here's the first one. Uh, and, and it's about, it says, some people want it to happen. Some wish it would happen and others make it happen. Michael Jordan. And that is a great thing to remember if we were Michael Jordan. And so here's, here's another one. Here's another one I remember. Attitude. This one says, attitude is a little thing that affects everything. A positive attitude has a ripple effect. Change your attitude and change your world. I have some opinions. And so, so I, uh, I know some of us maybe are new meeting each other, but um, I love satire. I have a very sarcastic bent in me. Pray. That, uh, and I don't think it's going to leave until I see Jesus. And so there's actually another website that's like in competition with successories, and it's at despair.com. And they make, they make all these other ones that are like unsuccessories. And so here's some unsuccessories for you. Here's the first one. Failure is not an option. It is your destiny. <laughs> How about this next one? You can't boo, I'm preaching. Uh, and then here, here's the next one. The sky is the limit. Too bad you can't fly. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so to me, those are just wonderful, realistic statements for us to remember. We can kind of have uh, that approach to Proverbs because it almost looks like bumper sticker religion where there's things that we all live by. And so what is wisdom at the end of the day? I, I know we've defined wisdom time and again in this series, but I like to offer mine as we kind of walk through this. When I think about wisdom, and I have to keep things simple, it is this. Wisdom is the ability to think and act as a reflection of God's character. Wisdom is the ability to think and to act as a reflection of God's character. So as you notice, there really is, uh, I didn't really talk about IQ or intellectual abilities or degrees. Uh, my papa, who passed away uh, almost 20 years ago, his name was Audley Turner, had the most unique name ever. And he really is my hero in the faith. And way back in the 30s, uh, when he got to be a freshman in high school, his heart burned for people to know the gospel, and he was extremely poor. 
So literally, he dropped out of high school to work, but also to preach the gospel. And so, uh, and here he is. He is my grandfather. I have him beat by three degrees. And I will never match the wisdom of my grandfather. Because his whole life was wrapped up in reflecting God's character. And so as we go into this sermon today, I'm going to be in Proverbs chapter 1, 20 through 33. It's actually one of the rare sections in the book of Proverbs that actually has a section that's all connected. And it's talking about wisdom. And in this section, Solomon does something very interesting when he talks about wisdom. He uses a literary device called personification. In other words, he is ascribing a certain concept to a person. And so what he does to communicate wisdom, he talks about wisdom and it's being portrayed as a lady, specifically as a lady prophet. And so as we walk through this, that's going to come out. And so Proverbs 1, 20 through 33 reads this way. Wisdom cries aloud in the street, in the markets, she, there she is, raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand and no one has heeded. Because you have ignored all of my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I, will, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm. And your calamity comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not listen. I will not answer. They will, not, they will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. This is really heavy. But 30, verse 33, but whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. I understand you're going, hey, can we go back to those successory posters? Because I felt a lot better before you read that passage. Well, one thing I want to remind you is we continually, continu continually cheapen and diminish the importance of wisdom. And I, I'm stubborn. I'm really prideful. I need, I, many times, I need like a semi-truck of truth to wake me out of my lukewarmness, my complacency, my laziness, my slothfulness. And so in many ways, that's the attitude that I uh, approach this text. And so as we read through this, here's some, first of all, some good news. Wisdom is available to everybody. Wisdom is available to everybody. I kind of grew up thinking that wisdom was only reserved for certain types of people, for the elite of the culture. But as you notice, when we first started, it says wisdom cries aloud in the street, in the day-to-day -day life, in the markets, in our business sector, and at the head of noisy streets, she cries out at the entrance of city gates. The concept of city gates, especially in the Old Testament, was where people met and they made decisions and, and government. In other words, we need wisdom in our house all the way to we need wisdom in the White House. We need wisdom in social media. We need wisdom in God's church. There's no category of human existence that does not need wisdom. Dwayne Garrett, in his commentary in this section, says, Wisdom is not some hidden treasure that has to be dug from the depths of the earth or the sole possession of the lonely sage sitting on top of a mountain. To the contrary, wisdom roams the streets looking for someone to instruct, 
The waves of right and wrong as presented in his, this word of God are open for all to read and follow. But why is wisdom so hard and so rare? Here's the big idea for today. We can never gain wisdom without the humility of listening. The reason why we have bad wisdom is because we're bad listeners. I get it. You're here going, we woke up for this. We're here and you're telling us that basically that bad listening or the commitment to not listen is a huge issue. Absolutely I am. In fact, um, when I went to Northern Kentucky University, I was a communications major and I literally had a class on listening, listening 101. And, and it was taught by Stephen Boyd. And he was the guy who pioneered that movement. And he actually wrote the book for the class. I flunked the class. <laughs> Why? I didn't listen. <laughs> but I realized through that class when I retook it the second time that listening <laughs> is so, so important but as followers of Jesus, we struggle with listening. Dietrich Bonhoeffer years ago said this, Christians, especially ministers, so often think they must always contribute something when they are in the company of others. That this is the one service they have to render. They forget that listening can be a greater service than speaking. Many people are looking for an ear that will listen. They do not find it among Christians because these Christians are talking where they should be listening. But he who can no longer listen to his brother will soon be no longer listening to God either. He will be doing nothing but prattle in the presence of God too. This is the beginning of the death of the spiritual life. And in the end, there is nothing left but spiritual chatter. Why is listening so important according to this text. Well, first, because we are drowning in other voices. Wouldn't it be great if we all could, is, all could say, the only voice I ever hear is the voice of God. We all know that's not true. In fact, did you notice when, that, when we started off with that scripture, it talks about the wisdom has to cry aloud. Uh, and at the head of the noisy street. And again, has to cry out. Why is that? It's because there's all kinds of competing voices that are inundating our ears all the time because we are drowning in other voices. Now, here's what's interesting. Um, this is what uh, Solomon says. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? So, who is Solomon describing? Uh, that word simple is a very interesting word. The closest word that we have for it in modern English is the word gullible. Now, when we hear gullible, we usually think of somebody that we would probably say is either very foolish or maybe even use the word dumb to describe or naive to describe somebody who is gullible. That's not what the scriptures are pointing to. Being gullible means this. I am opening my life to any voices that want to come into my life, and I am probably not going to make a decision which ones are true or not. And then I'm going to incorporate those into my life, and then we wonder why our life is totally out of control. Amen. Our life is unmanageable because we haven't managed what we're listening to. That's what it means by being simple. And then it uses this other word, scoffers or scoffing. This is the attitude. We don't use the word scoffing a lot, but I promise you, if you have ever raised teenagers, you know exactly what scoffing is. Yes. Scoffing Scoffers or scoffing is the attitude one takes when he or she has completely no respect for the person speaking or the content of the speaking. The one great thing about adolescents, the one thing I love about teenagers is you know immediately that they're scoffing. Yeah. 
As we grow older, we'd scoff just as much, we just hide it more. <laughs> In fact, so for instance, if you come up to me and want to have a conversation, if there's several things that if you want to talk to me about, in, outwardly, I'll be going, God bless you. Inwardly, I'm going to be scoffing. <laughs> if you come up to me and, and talk about how awesome Jimmy Buffett and the Beatles are, I am going to scoff. <laughs> if you talk to me about how awesome Auburn football is, I'm going to be scoffing. <laughs> if you think that breakfast for dinner is the best thing ever, I am going to be scoffing. It's funny. I'm talking about God's truth, and that's what gets the, that's what gets the cheerleading. <laughs> Folks, we can be here in this setting right now, and I could be not just preaching. I could just be reading the Word of God, and we can totally be scoffing inwardly. Do you know what scoffing does? It says this to God. I'll listen to you, and then I will decide if I will obey you. That's scoffing. And so we're drowning. We're drowning, right, in so many voices. The author, Michael Crichton, says, today, everybody expects to be entertained, and they expect to be entertained all the time. Everyone must be amused, or they will switch. Switch brands, switch channels, switch parties, switch loyalties. This is the intellectual reality of Western society today. In other centuries, human beings wanted to be saved or improved or freed or educated, but now they want to be entertained. The great fear is not of disease or death, but of boredom. We're saturated in so many voices when our life really is dependent on the ultimate voice ever. Amen. Yes. But see, how many times have we as Christians got on our social media accounts and we bemoan the evils of culture and talk about all the wrong messaging in our culture? And listen, that is legitimate. But you know, I have found out, I don't know if you have experienced this, I could be in a room, lights off, all by myself, no social media, no Netflix, no nothing. And I can still be full of noise. Yes. Yeah. My own flesh speaks to me all the time. And it's not good. In fact, I'm not going to ask for a poll, but if I ask the question, do you have an inward list of all the choices that you made throughout your life and you go, why on earth did I make that choice? Whenever we make choices that are ungodly, that are not pleasing to the Lord, it always starts off with some type of preamble of rationalization. Let me read a list. Has, can, has anybody familiar with any of these phrases on this list? This will feel great. I deserve this. This will only affect me. I deserve to be happy. Nobody will ever know. I need what other people have. I will somehow pay it off later. It's my life. This is wrong, but I'm better than a lot of people I know. I am liking this attention. This will help me blow off stress. God will forgive me. He has to, it's his job. Do you know why it's very, very awkward in this room right now? We've done these and more. This is why we need wisdom outside of us to speak into us. Amen. Yes. And so, why is listening so important? Because we are drowning in other voices. Here's another reason. 
Because life is hardwired with choices and consequences. All of life is hardwired with it. In fact, I would argue that all of our life pivots and develops a culture of our own that's really in many ways fueled by big and little choices that you and I make day after day after day after day. The principle with this that's very sobering is when we were very, very young and the, and the wrong choices we made, by and large, don't have as much long-term impact on us. But one thing about um, <clears throat> maturing and getting older is the choices that we make and the implications of them go deeper and they have more of a price tag to them. This is, this is why that hard section comes in that's very hard in Proverbs when wisdom, this lady says, because I've called and refused to listen, have stretched out my hand and no one is heeded, because you have ignored all my counsel, would have none of my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Jesus talks about this principle when he, he says something like, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Paul even says it more explicitly in Galatians 6, 7 through 8, when he says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows, that will he also what? Reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Recently, I read this very sobering story that occurred on May 7th, 1915. The British ocean liner RMS Lusitania was struck by a torpedo from a German submarine. There are a little bit over 2,000 people on this ocean liner. A little bit over 1,000 died. Well, Diane Preston, who wrote the book Lusitania, an epic tragedy, in her research about what occurred, she found the story of Charles Laureate. And this is what he shared. As the ship was sinking, as Laureate looked around to see who needed life jackets, he noticed that among the crowds now pouring on the deck, nearly everyone who passed by him that was wearing the life jacket had it on incorrectly. In his panic, one man had thrust one arm through an armhole and his head through the other. Others rushed past wearing them upside down. No one had read, no one had listened the neat little signs around the entire ship telling people how to put them on. Laureate tried to help, but some thought he was trying to take their life jackets from them and fled in terror. And the great tragedy is there was all kinds of people who lost their life bobbing in the ocean. They had a safety jacket, but they did not listen. So my friends, life, because life is hard while with choices and consequences, underscores the reason why we need to listen. I don't know who said this, but it's a true phrase. Being lost is living by a set of values that systematically dismantles your life. One of the passages or verses that's used many times by, especially by businesses, especially by Christian businesses, uh, and many times there's even churches who use this to talk about vision statements. And it's that Proverbs 29, 18, when it says, where there is no vision, right? People perish. If you are using that in your business, if you're using that in church life, do not use that. 
The heartbeat of that passage is not talking about vision statements. It's not talking about branding. It literally says, where there is no revelation from God, people perish. In other words, we can have the best vision statements in the world, and we haven't heard from God. It means absolutely nothing. Amen. Absolutely nothing. Amen. What's another reason why listening is important? Because wisdom has a limited supply. Verse 28 says, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me because they hated knowledge, did not choose to fear the Lord, would have none of my counsel, despised all my reproof. He, then I, therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and, and have their fill of their own devices for the simple are killed by their turning away and the complacency of fools destroys them. At some point, wisdom will not be available. It has a limited supply. I, I know that's heavy, but let me encourage you real quick so you'll stay in the sermon. We're still here. We're still breathing. So there is available wisdom from God. If what? We will listen. Ephesians 5 15 through 16 says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The scriptures tell us, Lord, teach us to number our days. James tell us, tells us that our life is like a vapor. I just took my third child to his college orientation. If I, I have like, Three adults. Folks, I remember vividly every one of their first days on this planet. And now I'm here. Life is fast. The reason why we need to listen, wisdom has a limited supply. Now, I know this has been heavy. I know we've been doing some heavy lifting and rowing, or at least maybe. Here's the last thing I want, I want to encourage us with. Remember the prize of listening. Verse 33, but whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. The prize of listening. Now, I'm going to come back to that, but before, before I do, I, j I just I want to be really uh, practical. Some things, I'm a rookie. By the way, I'm a rookie at listening. I do a lot of talking. I know that surprises you. So I'm, I'm, I'm very much a rookie, very much at listening. My family will tell you that. I always have an opinion, and I'm trying to rein that in. Here's some things I want to encourage you with that I'm learning. One, be ruthlessly intentional about listening. You've got to make a choice to do it. You have to make a choice. You can't be dependent on your emotions. You can't be dependent on your circumstances. You and I have to make a choice to say, I am going to listen to God. Whatever you need to do, find a place in your house uh, or a certain time, whatever that may mean. Ecclesiastes 5.1, Solomon also says, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know they do wrong. The disciples had a habit of losing Jesus because Jesus would go off by himself to listen to the Father. We have to be ruthlessly intentional about listening. And, and I think you'll agree with this. If we're not ruthlessly intentional about listening, this world and this, this society is already ruthless about talking to us. Already. Two, immerse yourself in the full volume of God's word. This is how we listen. When we read scripture, we're listening. We're listening. Immerse yourself in the full volume of God's word. When I say full volume, I do mean the Old Testament too, and the New Testament. 
All those passages that we love putting on our t-shirts and love having on our magnets and all those passages that are really, really hard to understand or just hard to take, we need all of that. The more and more you and I are listening and reading God's word, the more you and I are in tune to God's heart. Not too long ago, I was in the car and you know how Spotify will create its own playlist for you. And this song came up that I literally hadn't heard in probably over 20, 25 years. It'd been forever. And I'm listening to this song and I actually remember a rhythm change, a single rhythm change in a song. 20 or so years later, why was I able to do that? Because at one point in my life, I had immersed myself in that song. You and I are created to immerse ourselves in the heart and character of God. So that means that when we get to relationships that are not godly or somebody says something that is kind of off the rails or when there's certain things that are going on in society that are really, really hard, we know the heart of God. We're tuned to it and we're able to say yes to this or no to this. Next thing, remember that praying is the servant of our listening. I know that's controversial to some. How do we even know the commandment to pray by Scripture? How do we even know how to pray Scripture? How are we encouraged to pray through Scripture? Praying is a servant of our reading. Praying is a servant of our listening. I, I have lost track of people have come to my office and their life has totally become unmanageable. Their life has blown up. And I'll start pressing in a little bit and I'll start asking them about their walk with the Lord. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard people say, well, I'm praying a lot, but what, 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 does, what does the role of scripture look like in your life? Oh, I haven't, no, it's not there. What is that saying? I talk, but I don't listen. And then we wonder why we're where we are. Prayer, the language of prayer is the ultimate rationalization for a lot of us to sin. And if we are in habitual sin and we're praying, we're not talking to the God of the Bible. Frank Lobbock said this years ago, the trouble with nearly everybody who prays is that he says amen and runs away before God has a chance to reply. <laughs> Listening to God is far more important than giving him your ideas. Here's the next one. Listen, read for obedience and not for inspiration. Listen for obedience and not for inspiration. 1 John 5, 3, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Seek counsel from godly people who are willing to wound you because they love you. I'm a pastor guy, so there's lots of people who want to placate me. For my health, I need to make sure that I'm connected to people who love me so much that they're willing to wound me. I have those in my life. They may not always feel good, but they will be the pallbearers at my funeral and I will be theirs. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses, Proverbs 27, six. But then lastly, trust in the one who listened and obeyed perfectly in your place. When I look back at Proverbs one, I hear this verse. Hear, my son, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teaching. Solomon wrote that to his son. And guess what happened? Solomon didn't listen to his own counsel. The person who wrote this ruined his life. His house torn apart. His sons, if you read in Scripture, are an absolute mess. The question is, we are all the product of our family tree, aren't we? We all have cycles in our family tree that need to be broken. 
Some of it's self-righteousness, some of it's alcoholism, some of it's sexual impropriety. I mean, I could keep going. We all have family trees. We all have this function in our family trees and it continues over and over and over again. And if you're like me, here's all I wanna know. I just wanna know, is, there, is it possible to break any cycle in any family at any time? Yes. Because later on, there was another son who was going to be born who listened perfectly to the father and acted perfectly before the father. And he died in our place. So we could be sons and daughters of God. And folks, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. I don't know a lot. I do know this. Jesus loves me, and that's amazing to me. When I look inside of me, the fact that Jesus loves me is enough for me. Bridge, I love you. We appreciate you so much. We're getting ready to commemorate that beautiful act of Christ through communion. Uh, we're, we have a ministry team that's going to be coming through the aisles, and they're going to be passing out cups and a wafer to you. And all we ask that when they pass that to you, you don't need to act on that right when you get it. A little bit later, Stone will direct you in taking those together. But remember, the reason we do this is we are reminding ourselves of the greatest news ever in our life. That little wafer represents the body that was broken for us. The juice represents the blood that was shed for us, that cleansed us from sin, that enacted our adoption, that our emancipation papers written by his blood. So I want to encourage us to do that. I do ask that if you are here and you are not a follower of Jesus, I say respectfully, this is a time for you to witness and experience. But we just ask that you refrain from taking part. But if like, no, I don't want to refrain. I want to put my trust in Christ. By all means, go for it. There will also be people who will be standing up front. And you know what? You've been doing a lot of talking, but not listening. Maybe some of you are on the verge of making a decision that you know is going to blow up your life. And today was just a checkbox for you to rationalize. Stop. Repent. Turn to Him. And if you need to pray with these people to be up front, they would love to do that. Let me pray. Lord, thank you for your enablement. Thank you for who you are. And Lord, I ask that you would uh, grant faith, repentance through your Holy Spirit today. I uh, ask God that you would help us to be people who listen so we can gain wisdom, so we can make choices that reflect your character. Lord, we love you. Lord, we need you. Thank you for being you in your awesome and precious name. Amen. Amen, church. If you could join me in standing, our host team is going to begin passing the elements. Hold on to it. and We'll take it together here in just a minute. Our prayer team is available up front. We'd love to pray with you if you need prayer. Let's sing together. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but
but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. But holy trust in Jesus' name. Well, let's sing it out. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within.
glad you tuned in. Before we go, I want to encourage you to make the most of this time we're gathering online and take a next step, whatever God is stirring in your heart right now. We believe everyone has a next step to take, and we would be honored to walk alongside you as you take that today. It's too important to wait, so make sure to fill out our digital connect card or just drop a comment or prayer request in the chat, and our online hosts are there and ready to connect with you and pray with you right now. We're so thankful for the way technology has allowed us to do this this morning, and we hope that Bridge Online is a resource for you in your growing walk with God, or a step toward connecting to a local church family in person. You and I are both built for community, so I'd love to invite you to join us at one of our in-person services if you're in the Middle Tennessee area. But even if you're not, we'd love to help you find a church family near you where you can continue your journey of being with Jesus and becoming like Him, all in the context of community. And last but not least, the mission of The Bridge and the life-changing ministry we get to do is fueled by your generosity and it's helping us reach people with the gospel around our cities, nation, and all around the world. Giving is part of our worship to God because he has given so much to us, and it's an opportunity to give back to him and witness his faithfulness through the little or much we can give. If you'd like to give today, there are easy ways for you to take that step. And if you've already given, thank you. We have one of the most generous church families, and we're so honored to be on mission together. So one last time, at least for today, I'm so glad you joined us this morning. We love you and God loves you so much more. May we all be with Jesus and become more like him for the sake of the world. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.